All right, we are live and we are recording. I am very excited uh, to, to invite you guys to join me to our free online business strategy session. Um, today's topic is hearing the master say, well done. Um, and I, I'm, it's really a blessing because of the season that we're in, the times that we're in, the things that God is calling us to, the things that he was requiring of us at this time. And so we really want to look at this and really prepare for that season where he will evaluate all those things that we have done. And so we want to actually start at this moment with prayer, and then we'll come right back into the session um, and go into the teaching and then into some group strategy sessions. Um, specifically for the business owners that are online. And so, Father, we lift you up and we worship you, Lord God. And we thank you, hallelujah, Lord God, that you have endowed us with creative ability. You have given us the power to create wealth. You have given us dominion on the earth and you have called us to be productive with the gifts, talents, and abilities that you've placed in our care. You've called us to multiply resources that we might be blessed to be a blessing. And so we invite you even now to speak to our hearts and minds. We invite you to put your hand upon our businesses, that you would reveal your will and propel us into our next level, not just for ourselves, but for all those others who will need to, who need to benefit from the resources that our businesses produce and the finances that we create through our businesses as we go into even more challenging times in the years to come. We bless you for speaking and revealing your will, for you say you do nothing without first revealing it to your prophets. And so we ask, Lord God, that you continue to speak Continue to have your way. Continue to guide and direct us in accordance with your will as we move forward in today's business strategy session. Have your way, Lord God. Speak, for your servants are listening. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen and amen. Well, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because it actually speaks to the kingdom financiers. It speaks to those who are really operating in those businesses and trying to bring them to the next level because we want to look at what our master is going to say concerning our businesses. And in the times that we're in, it's more important than we could ever imagine. And so we're going to look at Matthew chapter 25. And we're also going to look at Luke chapter 19 to see this from a different perspective um, because we see a couple of different things in those two scriptures. And so starting in Matthew chapter 25, I'm going to read verses 19 through 21 first. Then we're going to go into verses 24 through 28 of Matthew chapter 25. And this is how it reads. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Now going on to verses 24 through 28 of Matthew chapter 25. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came in. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Then we want to look at this also in Luke chapter 19, specifically focusing on verses 12 through 17. I want to read those in your hearing as well. He said, a man of noble birth, he being our Messiah, he's telling this parable. A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But this, but his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, sir, your mina has earned 10 more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, Take charge of 10 cities. 
Now, there's a few things we want to look at in these two versions of the parable. This is a very similar parable, but it's kind of different versions of it in Matthew 25 and then Luke chapter 19. When we look at Matthew chapter 25, we see that different servants were entrusted with different amounts of money. So he's talking about stewardship. He's clearly talking to us about stewardship because he gave them money. And some of them actually put that money on deposit or actually invested it so that it earned a great return. One of them, he doubled it, completely doubled that money that he was given, um, which is a great return on his investment. The master is happy, he says to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, for us as believers, let's just stop there. Let's stop there for a second, because we like to quote that phrase, well done, good and faithful servant. But we like to apply it only with, you know, our compassion, the way we treat people. We do not apply it to financial stewardship and stewardship of the gifts that he's given us, which will manifest in our businesses. We don't apply this scripture as he gave it. We apply it in the area we want to apply it. We apply it in the area where we think we're doing well because the reality is believers tend to be terrible stewards over resources terrible stewards over finances and it comes from an entitlement mentality that causes us not to think that our god requires good stewardship from us but he's telling us very clearly right here that he does that he requires good stewardship now this is i'm looking at matthew 25 19 through 21 that's the scripture i'm looking at right now so in order to heal what here well done number one we've got to be good stewards over our resources which includes our talents that we would actually use to build our businesses so we want to be good uh, stewards over the finances that he's given us we want to be good stewards of the finances that our businesses make we want to be good stewards over our talents and abilities and and experiences that go into the businesses as well so this is important because that's what it takes to hear well done remember that because it's right there it's in plain english we like to take that and make it into something else, but it's just right there. <laughs> it's very clear. He's very plain about what he's talking about. Now, when we go on, he says, come and share your master's happiness. And most of us think that means, oh, well, I'm going to be in heaven on some clouds with a harp and eating grapes. That is a very Greek mentality of our master's happiness. Our master worked for six days and created the most duplicable, uh, self-sustaining, self-cleaning system we've ever seen. On the seventh day, he retired and left it to his kids, giving us a business model. Our God is productive. And so his happiness is not a lazy happiness. <laughs> Coming into his happiness actually brings us into a place of even more productivity, more responsibility. Keep that in the back of your head as we move on in these scriptures. So now let's go down to Matthew 25, verses 24 through 28. Let's, let's go down there. And what we see here is the servant who is rebuked. He's rebuked because he was afraid. He says he was afraid. So he takes what he's given and he buries it. Now, oftentimes we apply that to not using our talents or not letting our, our holy light shine, you know, not being righteous and or not sharing the gospel and all those things are, it's very important that we not, you know, um, put, bury those things in the ground, but specifically he buried money is what he did. And that's not how you sow finances. You don't sow finances by burying them in the ground. You sow actual seeds by burying them in the ground, but you don't sow finances by burying them in the ground. You sow finances by investing them. So he did the wrong thing with what he was given. He wasted it. So it does not gain any value when it should. This one had gold. Gold increases in value. And, and if he'd have done the right thing with that gold, he'd have more gold just like the other one in that. That gold would have been even more and more valuable had he invested and done with it what he should have done with it. But instead, he wasted. Now, in his mind, he was saving it, but he didn't get a return. So in the master's mind, he wasted it. That's a waste because there's no return. So he calls it wicked and lazy. He's called wicked because of his poor stewardship, y'all. Not because he cursed somebody out. Not because he had an addiction. Not because he committed adultery. He's called wicked because of his poor stewardship. We tend not to see things that way. How long have we been sitting on business ideas? How long have we been sitting on books? The Lord says that's wicked and lazy. It's right there. I didn't make that up. It's right there. 
and he doesn't say, see, and I got to look at y'all for this one. Y'all know sometimes we got we to look face to face. He doesn't say, I understand you have some fears and you're hesitant and the market is just not an easy thing to get into. You don't really know what's ahead of you. know, he says, wicked, lazy servant. He's he not playing with this guy. He doesn't go, oh, they're there. I'm so sorry that you felt afraid. Let me deal with these fears and, and woo you a little bit and, and make you feel better. No, he rebukes him sharply and casts him out. And the connotation of casting him out that we see in the scriptures, as you apply it to every other parable he reads, that casting out actually means sending him to hell. It equates, when he was cast out, it wasn't like, you know, just get him out of this room. I'm tired of looking at him. It equates to literally he cast him out of his happiness, meaning he's not dwelling with him forever, meaning he went to hell. That's the connotation of what happened to this guy who buried the gold. And we've got to understand this because we do not take this seriously. We don't take it this seriously. And, and this is how he said it. He's speaking very serious words. Like these are not mild words. It's not a mild parable. It's a very serious and urgent parable. And it was urgent 2000 years ago, y'all. So you know it's urgent now. Okay, so let's go back to the scripture. So now, after we look at this and we, we see that now he is, is, is he's gotten this gold taken away from him, they buried it in the ground. It, the gold is actually given to the one who, who was a good steward. So now he can steward more. We realize then the heart of the master. The heart of the master is, I give to those who have proven to me that they're going to do well with what I give them. And please know, I have seen this happen even in the spirit realm. People who do not steward gifts, talents, abilities, and finances, the, the way God wants them stewarded, he will take it from them and give it to someone who's proven to be a good steward. This is why the people in the kingdom who really, really serve God, all of us are overworked. You know why we're overworked? Because we've received assignments, gifts, abilities, talents, all types of resources that other people were, had before, but the Lord took them away and gave them to us. That's a very real thing. And, and we've got to understand what that looks like in the spirit realm because most times we don't get it. Most times we don't get that. And we really think that our God is, 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 has a different character than he has. We equate him to other gods that we've seen, you know, in, 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 in other religions, particularly Greek and Roman gods, because that's our, that's our background, y'all. No, we're not Greek and no, we're not Roman. But our, our culture is very much influenced by Greco-Roman thinking, the gods and the, the mythology, all of that. And so we don't see our God, the God of the Bible, the way he presents himself to us, which is through scripture. He shows us who he is right through the scripture, what he values, what's important to him. So then he actually tells us the truth. And this is the Messiah speaking. This is what, what the Messiah says. For whoever has will be given more. And, and this is in a natural, why? Because they'll get a return on their investment. It takes money to make money, right? But it's also in the spiritual because they've proven to God that they are responsible stewards. So in the natural and in the spiritual realm, they're gonna get more. Like it just, he opens up the windows of heaven. And then it says that they will have an abundance. Now, why would they have an abundance? It's the Abrahamic blessing. I will bless you to be a blessing. If you're a good steward, I can trust you to bless other people. So I'm going to bless you to be a blessing. Then it says, but whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And we see that in the natural realm, people who suffer from poverty, they, what happens? They, they, they get fees, um, interest, high rates on everything. So the little bit that they had has been siphoned off, has been taken. The predatory loans, like you understand what I'm saying? People who have little are targeted to lose even the little that they have. And this is in the natural, it's all over. Y'all know it's, it's everywhere. But that's also true in the spirit realm because of what it reveals is that God is looking for good stewards. And those who have not proven themselves to be good stewards, what they have is just going to leave them. It's going to be taken away. 
And so we've got to understand that it's a commandment to steward the gifts and the, the resources God has given us well. It's a commandment. It's not an option. It's not something we can, you know, decide if we want to do it, you know, and I'm thinking about doing it. No, that's no, it is a commandment because he's given us dominion on the earth. And there's something he requires that we do with that dominion. We've been actually studying Genesis chapter one for over a month in our Messianic Midrash Bible studies on Wednesdays or all of my Facebook page. I'll go to my Facebook page, Marquita Brooks. And as we've been looking at that dominion, it was the last two teachings. God has commanded us to go forth and be productive, subdue, have dominion. It was a command that came with a blessing, but it was not a suggestion. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a command that came with a blessing, which means if you disobey the command, guess what it comes with? A curse. And we tend to think, oh, we don't have any more curses because our Messiah nailed them to the cross. Guess, guess what? He did nail it to the cross. But if I step outside of his will and operate in disobedience, because that's what it is, and rebellion, I have then pulled the curses back upon myself, though I should not be living under any curse. Believers should never be li living under a curse. But rebellion and disobedience will bring them right back to us, even though he nailed them to the cross. That's the truth, y'all. Now, let's look at Luke chapter 19. Now, I read it to you already, but let's look at this particular scripture because in this scripture what we see is that at the end see this is the difference at the end he says because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter take charge of 10 cities now wait a minute we're seeing a greater level of stewardship he's not just saying come and join my happiness he's saying i want you to be governor over cities now, why would he say that? How come that's in this part of the scripture in Luke 19, but it's not in, in Matthew 25? Because when Luke shared this parable, he says that the man, the master, went away to make himself king. Now, where, where is our master right now? He went away to a distant place to make himself king. The father said, sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. So what's happening right now? Our master has gone away to make himself king over everything. He's the man in this analogy. When he comes back, he's already king, spiritually speaking, but he will be the physical king, emperor of the whole world. Like this is literal. This is a literal speaking of the millennial reign. So what he's saying here is, listen, I, I need y'all to get this. If you've been faithful with the resources, with the talents, gifts, with the businesses that I have put in you in this dispensation, right? You will rule with me in the next one. Why? Because I can send you to Taiwan and say, now teach them how to do business kingdom way. I can send you to Geneva and say, teach them biblical principles in economics. Why? Because you've been doing it in your business. You've been doing it in your own personal finances. And, and for you, it was on a small level, but the point is it was right. It was kingdom. It was an alignment. Now he can use you in larger arenas to actually help bring the world into alignment with him. It's that deep, y'all. It's that deep. Now, let's take it a little further. The last video that I shared with you guys, I think it was on Thursday last week, I shared that the Lord has been speaking to me about a global famine coming next year, 2023. I shared that in the video. I shared the entire prophecy during our um, Sukkot, our Feast of Tabernacles service, the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, and the Lord gave me scripture, like this how he speaks to me, gave me scripture out of Amos chapters four and five. And it speaks of an actual lack of resources, fi a famine, but famine from diff for different reasons, but famine. And we're not talking about just famine of the word, we're talking about famine of food. Now, when you look at what's happening in the world today, what we're seeing, this is important that we get this, you guys, what we are seeing is nations that produced harvest for the whole world, 
like Ukraine, experiencing complete destruction. So the bread that the world would have eaten next year from Ukraine, it was not going to have. We see regions that would have produced harvest that go all over the world for reasons of natural disaster and challenges like that are not producing harvest. California, no tomato harvest. The whole state. So we're not going to have the tomato products that we would have had next year. Other places in the world, we are seeing storage places. Just Google it. Food storage in Europe on fire. Google this. Food storage in the USA on fire. Google it. Why? Because storage houses, storehouses of food are being destroyed. They are being set on fire all over the world. Farmers having a hard time getting seed, compost. This is real, y'all. Drivers for trucks are needed because the transport of the food is decreasing. So for natural reasons, the prophecy is already showing itself to be true. But when we will fill it will be next year. Now, what does that mean? Y'all remember the word I gave y'all in 2020? January 1st, 2020. I said a year of precision. And I said, we got to rise up as Joseph. And what did Joseph do? He built a storehouse because the famine was coming. And a few months later, we went into a global plague. We are never going back. Things will get more and more and more and more challenging. But God has set his people apart to be blessed, to be a blessing. And he hadn't changed his mind about that. In the midst of global famine, the Lord is looking for a harvest of souls. Now, you know how that happens. You know, you know how a harvest of souls comes in in the midst of a plague or plagues up <laughs> and a global famine and water shortage because we're going to have some areas of the world are already experiencing water shortage and there's going to be even more because there's droughts and stuff and the droughts are contributing also to the famine. How do we get a harvest of souls in the midst of all that? By God's people rising up as Joseph's, storing up now so that when people are looking for assistance, we are able to bless them. And guess what he's going to do? Whatever we've been faithful over, he's going to spiritually multiply it, you guys. We're going to see loaves and fishes multiply because we've been faithful, but he can't multiply zero. Zero times anything is still zero. If you are faithful in this season, what he has given you will not run out. He will use it to bring other people into the kingdom. But if you're not faithful, you're going to be the one shaking your fist, wondering where is God in the midst of all of this? And you're not supposed to be that person. You're supposed to be the person who's providing the resources so people can say to you, tell me about your God, the one who told you this was coming, the one who's coming back to rule the world, who's trying to humble all of us so we can be prepared for his reign, because that's what it's all about. All of this is about the fact that he's coming back, y'all. We're supposed to lift up our heads because our redemption is drawing near, which means we don't work less. We got to work harder because night is coming. It's day, but night is coming. We better work. And we've got to do the work he's called us to. No matter what type of business you have, it's a resource in the earth. No matter what type of idea you have, it's a resource in the earth. And the, the window that we have, y'all, this opportunity, this beautiful opportunity we have, that window is closing, is closing, is closing, is closing, is closing, is closing. And everything you said to yourself that you are going to do in the future, the time is going to come when that I'm going to do, that that's going to be over, that I'm going to do. Mm -mm. There's not going to any, be any more of I'm going to do. Either you did it or you didn't do it. Because people are going to have need of it right then. Not in 20 years, not in 10 years, but next year. So I'm talking to Kingdom Financiers today because we want to make sure whatever's holding you up gets removed. Or if you're already at that place of success, because this is this is the, the third type of, of, of avatar that I work with. Y'all know I got three business avatars. I work with uh, budding entrepreneurs, people with visions and ideas for their businesses. I work with um, entrepreneurs who are already working their businesses but but need a little help going to the next level to expand it and grow it and then i work with successful entrepreneurs business owners 
who are looking back at everything they've established. They want to make sure that it is in alignment with the kingdom of God so that he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so that's what we're looking at today. Let's look at what you're doing, what you've done. Will he say, well done? Are you positioned to be a Joseph? And if not, what do we got to do to get you to the next level? That's where we are today. That's what we're talking about, you guys. And so I am blessed because uh, we've actually got a, a few entrepreneurs on board with us. Um, I've actually talked to uh, Shelly and Wendell already before we started. Uh, we've got a couple of entrepreneurs that have joined us joined us since we began. And so what I want you guys to do, um, if you joined me after I started this broadcast, is please put in the chat if you would like for your business strategy session to be broadcast, because we're broadcasting live right now, or if you want your business strategy session to be at the end after the broadcast starts. So please, for those of you who just joined me, like you joined me after I started this broadcast, let me know in the chat if you would like your business strategy session to be broadcast, a part of this broadcast, or if you'd like it to be after the broadcast ends because you got some private questions, some private challenges that you'd like to be discussed so that it's not recorded and broadcast. So make sure you guys put that in the chat for me. But we are going to go over to Miss Shelly, um, who is just a blessing. I remember when I first started Kingdom of LLC years ago, I, I took on a few coaching clients. Um, and I said, I want to give away some coaching for free. And I said, if you guys apply to this guy, I did, did like a little, um, uh, it's like a sweepstakes type thing. If you apply to this sweepstakes and you guys win, you'll get coaching for free. She was one of those first ones. I'm going to tell you, everybody that came out of that group, they're killing it. Everybody that came out of that group, you guys are working on your businesses. You're writing books. <laughs> you're doing all type of stuff. It was one of the best seeds I ever sold. <laughs> it was such a blessing. And since then, she has been a faithful coaching client. She's come back and come back and come back to the coaching programs. And so I'm always blessed when, when Michelle is involved because she's doing great things and she is faithful with what God has given her. And so where are you at now, Michelle? Tell us a little bit about your business and then let us know what your next level looks like so that we can help you get to the next place. Well, hello, and thank you for having the strategy session of Pops and Makita, uh books. And what, um, where I'm at, um, my business is Total Life Wealth. I have been working with the, um, the Airy Network to, uh, to launch the business this year, which I'm excited about doing. I had some other products that I've done, um, self-published a book and did some other, little, some other affirmation cards, et cetera. But I was pulling it all together this year to launch it. And so that's what I'm excited about now. And so I'm still in the the uh, beginning stages of the business launch but i'm excited i feel so much better because i went through like you said the different uh products uh from the seven day coach to the um um I can't think of his name right now but the program where you make 31 days uh going through that to identify what type of wealth creator i was and so all that is all tied in together and even um dealing with my uh, discovering my divine uh, identity so all i mean i said those names just right but all of it is tied together to get me to this place where i feel much more confident and have more clarity about which direction i'm heading and so i am um, feeling good about where i am and i'm thankful for this business strategy session so my next level is basically i think what i struggled with for a while was i was torn between ministry and business and how to bring those two together and not look uh Although my, I know my purpose is to, you know, be like I said, like the Joes and be able to bless to be a blessing and not lean towards more of giving away and being able to bring in the income to be able to be that blessing. And so sometimes that's a fine line for me because as you know, my husband and I, we uh, uh, founded a church. He's the pastor there. And, and so sometimes I see myself uh, torn sometimes like okay, is this ministry or is this business and so that has been a challenge for me even just, uh, on Facebook to get more visible as well so so I'm not sure if that's you know if that's a, if anything else you want to share I'll be, uh, want me to share I'd be happy to amen thank you for sharing that that's helpful in it and I think it will bless a lot of other people I know that was a place where I started um, because I've been doing ministry for 21 years leading the truth in the spirit I've been a uh, business consultant for 21 years but when god called me to start kingdom of llc in 2017 i remember in my mind 
business and ministry were so separate. They were like polar opposites. And they were in these boxes. Like business was in a box. Ministry was in the box. And God was in the ministry box. <laughs> and the Lord bust out of that box. <laughs> he broke that box to pieces. And then he destroyed my little box system. And what he helped me to understand is that, you know, that word ministry means service. In which case our businesses our ministry to that extent, meaning they are designed to serve people. That is essential that we understand that. But this is the different caveat. See, this is a different caveat. Ministry functions off of tithes and offerings. God has set that, that, that system in place. So tithes and offerings come in to the man and woman of God. Man and woman of God are then able to do more service, ministry. In business, business creates products and services that are priced, that are sold, so that the resources come back into the business so that the business can do more of the blessing, creating more products and services, also doing outreach, doing community programs, uh, funding churches, even sewing into church, like all of that. So this is where, um, first off, you gotta, you gotta shift in your mind and in your heart because in, when there's any place where we see business is worldly or we see money is evil, when, when any of that is still there, it will block us when it comes to us as kingdom financiers. And most of the time, you know, we've addressed it to a certain extent, but there's still more that the Lord is trying to take out. There's still more that he's trying to pull out. Um, and so he'll keep pulling it out. He'll keep pulling it out because it's been sown into us um, by spirit of religion, honestly, that the enemy designed to keep us impoverished. Like that's the point of it. Um, and the enemy created it. It didn't come from God. <laughs> it didn't come from God at all. Just a misuse of scripture. <laughs> like it's a terrible misuse of scripture. Um, but when we get that, then we go, okay, Lord, I need deliverance. And, and it's real. Like I'm talking long-term ministry to, to hearts and minds. And this is all believers. Like we all need it. If we're in the West, Western believers, we all need it because we've all received that. So then what we have to do as we're getting that deliverance and shifting our mind and our thinking, now we have to say, okay, Lord, who is my business designed to bless? And you know, I've actually talked about this before because there's two groups. There's the group that are your direct customers, but then there are also the people that will be blessed indirectly that you serve in some other kind of way through your business. Like um, by mentoring people, like you might mentor people through your business. So you might bring in a team through your business. So your business might be involved in community service. And, and so you're serving other people indirectly. So you got multiple groups, but you need to know the difference between those groups. Because the community group that you're supposed to serve, that's not necessarily a group of your customers. Your customers are people who need what you have, who will recognize that they need it, and they can't afford it. The people who need it, but either don't know they need it or can't afford it, that's not the customer base. And our hearts often are for that other group. The group that needs it, but they don't know they need it or they can't afford it. That's the outreach group. And you can't start with the outreach group because you won't have a foundation for your business. So you have to put the outreach group, remember them, store them up in your heart. Like Mary treasured up all the prophecies in her heart about her son, but focus on the customer base. Those who need it, know they need it and can't afford it. And once you identify who needs it and knows that they need it, see those two things, they need it and there is some type of awareness within them that will cause them to recognize I need this. They're self-aware enough to know I need this because that's a different group than the group who needs it but don't know they need it. Because you can run after that group all day long. You can do Facebook posts all day long. You can do, it won't even matter. You're wasting your time. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't realize that they need it. They can go, oh, this is great for those other people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But the group that will, the group that's aware enough to recognize that they need it, you set your pricing for that group. You see what I mean? Like now you're looking at what can this group afford? And how can I even help them realize that they can afford it? So you're thinking about people, oftentimes for, for us, you know, the type of things that we've created um it's often people like ourselves you know what i mean so it's not it's not you don't have to go too far here you know, when you're thinking about this group so they need it they know they need it because they're self-aware enough now you're looking at their life what does their life look like what do they spend the money on where are their resources going 
How can you help them to see that this is a priority for those resources? And possibly even, so this would be a good Facebook post, what they should take money from in order to sow into this particular program. Like uh, what you do actually helps people to, 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 to become healthy in various areas of life, right? So if you can identify money that's going to unhealthy places, you can tell your ideal customer, stop doing that because this is how much, this is approximately how much you're spending on that per month and divert that money over here so you can actually help yourself grow because you already know that you are struggling in this area, this area, this area, and this is what that struggle looks like. Like the, 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 the test that you have, when you look at those, you can actually pull points right out of that assessment that, because the assessment shows you where you're lacking. You can, you can start to highlight See, if you're experiencing this and this and this and this, divert money from that area and it should go here. And what I would suggest to you is that you actually create themed posts because you've got categories um, in your business and you can have posts that are that are match up with your category. Like for one week, you'll do one area, one area of, 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 of healthy living. You see what I mean? And when you focus on that one area, all the posts for that week are all about that one area. So you're, you're listing the unhealthy habits that are happening in that one area. Like, hey, if this is going on with you, um, you you're not in, in the place you need to be in. <laughs> and this is how much money you're spending doing that because anything we're doing that's unhealthy is going to cause us, it's going to cost us some money. The devil don't ever give us unhealthy stuff for free. Isn't that crazy? He charges us money to destroy us. <laughs> You know what I mean? Whatever he's given us is unhealthy. We are paying him for it. We are not getting it for free. You see what I mean? So you can list the unhealthy habits in that area of life and then where the money is going. And then now stop doing that. <laughs> Pray that God can deliver you and divert the money over here so you can actually retain your thinking. Because you need this program and you've got to get to the place where you can confidently tell somebody that they need this program. You need this program. And let me tell you why. And you you might have to practice that on, you know, like your friends and family members um, in a place where you can go, you know what? I do see it. People do need this because you got to believe it. Nobody will believe if you don't believe it. And I can tell you after having, you know, read through a lot of your stuff, people do need it. <laughs> people do need it. I can tell you that. But you got to believe it because you got to be able to say that. You got to be able to communicate that on Facebook. You got to be able to communicate that in your emails. You know what I mean? Whatever you're sending out. You got to be able to communicate. You need this. Does, does that make sense? Is that helping? Yes, it is helping. And I thank you for that. And because I did one of my struggles was with, because you know, I have the Facebook, but it, when I created it, it was just so generic. And so I got people from all over, you know, that from high school and the people I know that are not my customer base. And so the targeting of the, the Facebook message, and that's one thing I would was uncertain about you know what to do um to reach um the individual i feel like who are my customer base and not just my community who i encourage or you know uh, give an uh, inspiring word or wh whatever but how to reach that customer base and that's why i was kind of torn between do i stay on facebook or do i look to linkedin but i know more people who probably come maybe from a uh, christian uh, uh, spiritual perspective I'm not sure whether you know which platform is the best because I don't want to start off with too many and maybe just focus on one platform but I do like the idea of uh doing a theme week uh, which I can um use um when I launch uh, probably the first of next month and so um I like that idea of that so yes and then like you said I got to share it in a way that uh people believe I believe what I'm saying you know and I know it you know and so and not for like I um, it's like, okay, it's okay if you do, and it's okay if you don't, you know, that type of thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, and, and, exactly. And the urgency, I like when you talk about the, the parables, because the urgency of it, I got to realize it's not about me feeling comfortable, but it's also realizing there's an assignment that I, you know, there's an urgency on this that I'm, a, I'm responsible to steward. And that from that perspective versus me like, oh, it's okay. You know, I'm just, you know, if I do it next year, fine. If not, no. But no, there's an urgency with this because of what, you know, what is required so, and what's happening. Right. So, Wonderful. So, 
there's two last things that I would say to you, and then I'm going to go to Mr. Wendell. So Wendell, I'm going to get yourself together because I'm coming to you in about two minutes. Um, first off, I do think Facebook is the better platform for you okay. because people tend to go to Facebook to make themselves feel better. Okay. Facebook is this, you know, affirm me, like me. And, and that's a great place for you to say, hey, are you where you need to be? <laughs> you know, it's a good place to do checks because people do those little tests on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, am I this, am I that? Like all this little stuff. They do all that stuff on Facebook when really they could be doing something that's actually going to help them, which is your product. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then additionally, um, in addition to you making sure you use Facebook as a, as a um, platform to kind of connect you know, hook them and let them know where they really are and that there's an urgency, you can look at your own assessment and see the urgency because I want you just to imagine this. Next year, people going into grocery stores and shelves are empty. People who are low on certain areas of your assessment are going to struggle way more than other people with that. And so these are things you want to be helping people to address now because when you're in a healthy place, the, the circumstances around you don't change you. But when you are not, the circumstances around you will affect everything. You understand what I mean? And we're supposed to be on a solid rock. But if we're not, because we're not in, the, in the, the place we need to be in in all those areas that's on your assessment, challenges going on around us, well, it will affect us more than it should. And so that's part of your urgency. You want to help people get ready so that they're really trusting the Lord, they're healthy, they're they're stable you, you know what i mean in challenging times to come because just because the world is shaking doesn't mean god's people should be shaking we shouldn't be shaking because we're part of an unshakable kingdom but if people are, are ranking low on your assessment <laughs> they're going to be shaking you, you understand what i mean <laughs> i hope that makes sense to you because i don't want to put all your assessment stuff out there but i want to make sure you understand that it should reveal to you man they need this okay yes it makes sense and thank you so much yes you're so welcome. And anything else? No, I'm good. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Praise God. Well, I'm going to move on to Mr. Wendell because our, our other two business owners, I'm, I'm actually going to do their strategy session uh, once we stop the broadcast. And so um, I bless God, you know, for, for you, Wendell, and the relationship that we've had over the years. Um, what I would like to start with is for you to briefly share what you do and feel free to, you know, if you want to share websites, stuff like that, that's always welcome. I actually like to do that because I want people to know where they can get more information, how they can connect. Um, that's always an option if you'd like to do that. Um, but then also know this, I'd like you to then respond to the scriptures and the message for today, because I'm sure I saw your face all the time that the Lord has put some things in your heart and I think they will be a blessing to us. So I'm going to turn it over to you <laughs> and allow you to share. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. So just listening um, to the scriptures that you went to, you, you know, my favorite is uh, Matthew 6, uh, 25 through 33, not just 33. He's literally telling us the whole picture right there. And I absolutely love the way that's laid out because we as a body have taken the spiritual side of, of uh, everything. Cause he does say all things, not spiritually only, but the body, uh, don't matter if you church, mosque, synagogue, uh, temple, stay at home, doesn't matter. We are doing 99% spiritual and splitting that last 1% on your physical and your financial. That makes no sense. And I have been talking about this at nauseum for years. The church, the mosque, the center, name them. Most people in these environments are baroque. Everybody's talking about heaven and the other side and eternity. Don't we know there's a work we're supposed to be doing right here that the world walks by sight and not faith? We walk by faith, they walk by sight. How has it been going attempting to win the world spiritually? So, somebody tell me, how's that been going? Is that is that really working? I mean, again, when they broken to broke can broken have nothing left okay yeah those people come to god but what about the rest of them that still need god but look at the body of christ and go hmm i'm their boss i'm doing way better than them financially i'm fit you know i'm spiritually in trouble 
but I'm looking at them with my natural eyes, what the world uses. And they're not seeing all that stuff we're preaching in the Bible about being the head and not the tail, the lender, not the borrower, that we're going to lend to nations, people, and not borrow. They're not seeing that. They see us struggling right beside. Apostle Lily just said this. She literally just said, we cannot, which we already have been, in that position. Okay, so now that we've showed them that <laughs> we got it as bad as they do, even though we shouldn't be, how about we rise up and come out of that? So now with their natural eyes, they go, wait a minute, hold on. I don't need no spirits for this. You used to work below me or beside me. What you mean you leaving? Leaving and go where? What you talking about? Oh, the God I've been talking about, I had, I had it misconstrued. I had things out of a balance. I was skewing off out of alignment. And I finally realized that. And I put my life back in balance according to his will, not mine, sprinkling him on it, but doing it the way he said in his scriptures. And because I did that, guess what happened? I'm up out of here. How hard? Somebody tell me, just make sure I ain't crazy. Is it easier to do our God-given work, our ministry, the work that we need to do, what we were innate, put in us from birth? Is it easier to do that with a job? 8, 12, 16, 18 hour days? Or is it easier not to have to go to those and literally have all day long to do your ministry or spend time with your family or, 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 I've been doing this, last time I punched the clock, I was 29 years old. I am 48. I'm telling you, when people talk to me and tell me you should do this and go do that, and I'm like, you working, you tired. You probably half heard what God told you to tell me. I'm listening to God all day long if I so desire. Any day of the week, it doesn't even matter. So if we can get free from our time bondage and the financial bondage, both of them, with our physical bodies being put back on track, there is absolutely nothing the kingdom children cannot do. And oh my, let us all work together. Like I literally at this point, I just want to shh. I just want everybody just for a minute, since I'm in the Joseph of today, and I don't know where the rest of us are, but when we speak, you might want, shh, what did Joseph do? His family had all kinds of things that was mad at him. Then he got moved off. The woman lied on him. Then he got put in prison. And what did Potiphar do? The Potiphar went and told the people, look, hey, hey, put Joseph in stuff. Put this man in charge of your stuff. Your prison going to run amazing. Who does that? It's because it's God's anointing on his people. Certain ones to do certain things. Everybody in their lane. Let Joseph do Joseph. All Joseph did was save the whole known world. That's all. In effect, and the system that God put through him into Egypt for the world, that blew my mind. I slowed down. I went back and broke that thing down and saw what he did. Oh, my God. God got it. He don't need our help. Get your button passing the seat. I'm over there. Let him drive. We've been trying to do this too long. In the name of God, Jesus, Father, Heavenly, Alpha, Omega. We've been doing this too long. Shh. Get in the passenger seat. Let him drive and just do our part. This is my part. So here's a question. If you're, To show what God has dropped in me, we've cracked the code on two. Time and finance. We, we got them two cracked. That code is cracked. <laughs> if your monthly bills... Think about who got monthly bills. Because I heard, um, Apostle, you were breaking down uh, the two different things. Watch this. L listen to what I'm about to say. Who, as an adult, don't have to pay bills every month? Isn't that everybody? Okay. Now, if your monthly bills, cell phone, internet, storage, uh, you get water delivered to your house, um, just your monthly regular bills, What your insurances, what if what if those could go down for free? Would that would that be a good would that be good stewardship? I, I, I'm thinking it would be if it didn't cost you anything. They go and look see can they help you lower your bills so you can have more of your income stay in your house. Sounds like good stewardship to me. We have that. What if you could lower your mortgage, the death note, the one we all think is so great? Yeah, that one. <laughs> go look it up. Mortgage death note. What if we could lower that and knock it off years? I'm not talking about months or days. Years faster on your current budget. 
The money you spend right now, you can lower your mortgage payout. We just did a mortgage two years ago. It's going to be paid off in five. Huh? What? Let me say that one more time. We just did a mortgage, 30 year mortgage. We knew before we sat down, it was going to be paid off in a matter of six years. <laughs> we got five years left on the 30 year. The bank think they got us on the hook for 30 years. They have no idea. On our current budget, I don't need extra income. I don't need to go create anything. We already have this tool. Our ecosystem has grown drastically, Apostle, since the last time we talked. We have now five times, eight times, 27 times our finances have grown because of just what that scripture was talking about, where we put it to where it can grow. If I don't watch this, I'm watch this. I'm watch, just watch me real quick. I just got paid. Oh, wait, you didn't see it? Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, I'm, I'm still getting paid. I'm not doing anything. I'm talking to y'all on a webinar and we get paid all day long. Things have really changed. The pieces from searching, and Apostle can tell you, I have been searching because God said he was going to make me wealthy, not rich, not above, no, no, wealthy, spiritually, physically, financially, nothing lacking. I said, oh my God, okay, that's a long time ago. But because I never quit or gave up or overdid it and then ran out of, I don't do that. I let, but now, now the ecosystem is in place. It's in place. I can tell you sitting here right now talking to y'all, next year, I will be a multimillionaire. Sitting here talking to y'all without a job. My wife won't be working after next year. We're going to be able to do ministry or a fund ministry, help me anytime we want. But again, it's going to be God's call. We're not about to be giving out fish. No, 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 no. You are hearing this now. This is the time to talk to us to find out what we got for free. Because again, if you're worried about losing your fund, no problem. We got free <laughs> that can lower and put finances back in your pocket that go out too much. We're overpaying. We're going to turn debts into assets. What used to go out can come back in. If you graduate from that for free, now you can make those funds go another way and actually make more regardless if you're working or not. Sick, tired, on vacation, ministry, you feel like you're not feeling, it doesn't matter. The wealthy take their fight. Like the scripture said, they put it to work. It didn't say they went to work. They said they put it to work and it bought back more. We have the entire ecosystem from free to lowering bills to lowering debt to increase. We have the entire thing now. It took a long time. But by next year, I'll give an example, this year in March, that was what, seven months ago, 15th of March. I went back just to see how much uh, passive income, what my ministry that God has put in me, what he's given me to do. What does my, what does this do? We're at $22 a day doing nothing, which don't sound like a lot. That's like over eight grand a year. Most people can't even save eight grand because they maxed out. I'm sitting here right now talking to y'all seven, <laughs> seven months later. Our month, our income per day with no work is over $200 a day in seven months. When I tell y'all some things have changed and you can do free, Low, whatever. We have the actual formula. It doesn't matter anymore. Time freedom, financial freedom. You can do whatever you want, ministry-wise, life-wise, all of it. Everything has changed. And I'm beside myself with excitement. While she was talking, that's why I was bound. I had to turn the camera off. I'm like, I'm going to distract. Let me just cut this camera off. I can do a little thing up in here and not distract everybody. Because this has been way, way, way overdue. We've been too long. And now it's here. Again, I mean, it's not new. We're beyond late. Uh, people like to go, oh, oh, God's timing was right now. No, stop it. His time was before down. You are the reason why it took long. Me is why it took long. So now that we finally get in position, don't, don't, uh, don't throw this on God tomorrow. And it's God's timing. No, he been said go. Because what she's talking about that's coming, we've known about this for a few years. He don't want you now trying to rush in the last three, four, five, six months 12 months before the poop hits the fan. He'd been telling us, but we wouldn't listen or we couldn't connect with the people to get the flow going. So the body of Christ financially, physically in their natural body and their time could come back to them. So we can be in preparation like Joseph for such a time as this. I'm just blown away. So yeah, let me shut up. <laughs> I just want, all I'm looking for now is who can we sh share this with 
Buddy up with, show y'all a better way so your time, your finances come back to you. Redeem the time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can redeem the time when you're not in no job or you ain't got no time issue. You can't run it out of time every day. You take them two off the table. The number one, what is it? The number one divorce. Y'all know what it is? It ain't spiritual. It's this, number one. Take that off the table and let's go. My opinion. Back to you, sis. What is your web address? Or you can give us the YouTube channel, um, but share it. You know, if you can put it on the screen, that'd be great. Otherwise, put it in the chat for me and I'll put it on my um, PowerPoint so that I can show it. Because, you know, some people are visual. Um, we yeah, there's a, couple of, there's a couple of ways. Um, if you go to YouTube, because again, we've constructed this YouTube over time. So if you go to YouTube and search better, Solutions LLC. It's a yellow and black uh, logo. You'll see. That's us. You can go up there, go straight to the playlist, and see everything that's been prepared, from finances to spiritual to financial to laughter. I mean, we got everything up there. There's nothing missing. He said no lack. I said okay. It literally says at the top, wealth is spiritual, physical, and financial. Yeah, there. Click that one. All right, Better Solutions LLC. You guys see it? Clicking that. I want to thank. There it is, right there. Pause that and hit yeah. playlist. Hit that playlist, and you can see right at the top what we're about. This ain't a better way. This is the look. It's to get. Look at the playlist. Spiritual, physical, financial. We have everything on here. The economy. What is money? What's the blockchain? Working out. We got three two hundred thirty one videos on getting your healthy body back. Songs to listen to. Reducing the monthly bills. There's the one I talked about, the lower your bills for free. Mm -hmm. Seven videos. Click view play playlist and you can see them. And then get out, eliminating the long-term debt. That's right there. Them, them big ones, the mortgage, car payment, all that stuff. Yeah. And then our investing, if you want to call well, it's not investing. We're just learning to exchange. We take dollars and turn them to crypto. You're not buying, you don't buy currency with currency. It's called an exchange. You literally right. just take dollars, turn them into another currency. And then let that go out and make more while you sleep for the next 18 months, just like the bank. See, the key to that, the key to that particular asset factor that's just literally cranking out more assets, the bank takes your dollars that you give them, they give it to their partnership and do what? Increase it uh, hundreds, thousands of percent every single year. Your funds, how much comes back to you? 0. 0.0 something. What? The devil is a liar. No, right. we have a now partnership with one of the entities we work with. They have the same kind of licensed brokers that do bonds, stocks, uh, ETFs, uh, indices, commodities, crypto. They're doing all of that too. But wait a minute. They're only splitting with us. There's no bank between us and them. Game over. The game is over on that end. But learn to save better. Learn to take that debt back and then put it into asset. Back. It's a whole ecosystem. It's synergistic how this flows, and it is working phenomenally for people that's using it. So I hope that helps. And you guys are directly connected to um, Apostle. I do not have um, on the YouTube any direct way to really get a hold of us. But if you reach back out to Apostle, if you go up there and you click on something, be like, oh, my God. Reach out to her, and she will let me know. I do it that way on purpose because I tend to, the way God has shown me this is to string everybody together. Not everybody call Wendell. Like, let's say Apostle told you about something and you call me and there was financial blessing that she could use in her king, in her um, ministry or in her house. It doesn't matter. She at least has the opportunity. If you're calling her saying, hey, I'm interested in that saving on this or this or that or whatever, she can go, hmm, wait a minute, hold on. They interested? Hey, Brother Wendell, um, so-and-so want to know more about this particular program. Can I get involved with that? Now you're not just going to bless Wendell in his household. <laughs> you're going to bless Marquita in her household, period. Not even, you ain't even think about that. All you're going to do is mind your own business and help yourself. You're going to marry on bless her, us, and who told me, and so on. This is an absolute amazing system that we have put together. Pieces. That's how a puzzle is put together. It's not a one piece. One income is not the way to do this thing. <laughs> it's a puzzle has pieces. You need strings coming in. I hear her talk about this all the time because I do it as well. Streams of income. You got 15 bills. Why you got one stream of income? That don't make no sense. 
We got to have streams. And there's a much better way to do it. We found it. I thank God for it. Get your time and your finances back. Redeem the time. And then let's go do the kingdom work at a much higher level. Like on the top. Like what he said we're supposed to be. I'm just looking for those that we can get link up and go. Like go fast. Spread this through the church. Mama, synagogue, temples, whatever. That's right. Go time. That's right. And time is short. Thank you so much, Wendell. I'm going to share my screen with you guys because he just directed you back to me. So there's my email address, Marquita at kingdomofllc.com. My website is kingdomofllc.com. Those of you who are here, you probably are aware of that. Um, if you're listening on Instagram, Marquita is M-A-R-K-I-T-A at kingdomofllc.com. Um, and if you're interested in any of those things that Wendell just shared, send me that email. And then of course I'll connect you with him, but also remember the YouTube channel, Better Solutions LLC, that you can go back to and look at the videos so that you can really find answers to uh, the questions that you have about these different uh, uh, income sources um, and ways to decrease debt. Because there's two ways to make more money is to increase your income. The other one is to decrease debt. And, and either way makes you more money. So you want to be doing both. You want to be doing both because that plugs the holes in your pipeline and it shows God that you're a good steward. And so you want to be doing both of those. Um, and so praise God for you. Thank you so much, Wendell. And so I'm going to pray us out for this broadcast portion so then I can actually speak to the entrepreneurs who want to speak privately who are also on the, the broadcast, who are on the line with us right now. Now, so Marquita, after, oh, go you ahead. Do, after you do that, do we need to just stay here or is it finished or what are we doing? You can stay here because the, the other entrepreneurs may actually have questions for you as well. Um, okay. There's a question in chat for you. So you can stay right here in Zoom, um, okay. but I'll stop the Facebook and the Instagram so that what they share is private. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. All right. I'll be here. Right no here. Problem. Thank All you. Right. All right. Well, let's pray um, and we can close out this portion of our group strategy session. Actually, you know, I'm supposed to share with you guys the next session. There's another session coming. <laughs> and so this of course is my contact information i'll share that with you guys this is the next session we'll be coming together on tuesday november 15th at 5 30 p.m eastern time tuesday november 15th at 5 30 p.m eastern time and the topic is flourishing in the famine of 2023 because there is a global famine coming in 2023 and it's already begun. And so we want to know how to flourish in that famine. So that's the topic, flourishing in the famine of 2023. You're going to want to hear that as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, um, because it is not God's desire that his people would perish. It's not God's desire that we will be caught unawares. Instead, he wants us to be blessed, to be a blessing so that other people can actually um, be blessed by what he's doing in us and a harvest of souls can come in um, into the kingdom of God. And so make sure that you go to kingdomofllc.com to register for it. I will actually be uh, updating the website um, as soon as this is over. So probably at about 6 p.m. tonight, um, the, my website, Kingdom of LLC, will be updated so that you can actually sign up for this um, business strategy session November 15th um, at 5.30 p.m., which is a Tuesday. We'll be looking at flourishing in the famine of 2023 because a global famine is in fact coming. So let us pray with that note and we're gonna allow God to um, really minister to us of all that has been shared today. So Father, we lift you up and we worship you, Lord, and we thank you for revealing what you plan to do to your prophets. Just as you told Joseph, there will be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. You have been telling me since 2003 that, that plagues, war and famine were coming. Uh, you told me in 2020 that Joseph's need to rise up. Hallelujah, Father. And you're telling me now in 2022 that there will be a global famine in 2023. Why? Because you need your people in position. We bless you, Lord God, that you reveal your secrets to your people so that we can be in position. Messiah said that I call you friends. A servant doesn't know the master's agenda, the master's business, but a friend he does know. And so we are friends of the Messiah. We thank you for revealing your truth, revealing your secrets, your, re your revelation about finance and business and about being a blessing to others because that's what you want us to be. 
We ask even now, Lord God, that you cleanse us from mentalities of, of mammon that cause us to fear lack and to be greedy. Cleanse us of mentalities of Babylon that cause us to, to hoard and, and cleanse us of a spirit of religion that cause us to loathe money and, and try to get finances as far away from us as possible and, and to be poor stewards to bury our gifts and our talents in the ground, to bury our resources or to, to release them to the enemy so he can continue to attack us and keep us impoverished that we cannot do your will in the earth and we cannot be blessed to be a blessing. Deliver us, your people, from those spirits, from those strongholds, from those mindsets, from those attacks against us, Lord God, and cause us to flourish. I lift up every business and business owner represented here, Lord God, even those that will hear this later. And I thank you, hallelujah, Father, that you breathe upon our businesses, that you reveal your will, open the scrolls to us. Hallelujah, Lord God, ancient wisdom that we would understand not just how to thrive in our industries, but how to lead in our industries. We bless you that you desire to raise us up. Hallelujah, Lord God, that we would be the standard for the type of work we do in our business. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, that your desire is for us to be the head in this as well. We bless you, Lord God, that your word does not come back to you void. And we praise you that you apply it to us, but help us to align ourselves with you, that your blessings will flow directly into our households, into our finances, into our businesses, into our communities, through our businesses. We praise you for it. And we ask where we have doubt, where we have fear, that you forgive us and that you remove it in the name of Yeshua, Lord God. Forgive our unbelief and give us faith that we would trust you in this season to get in position to be blessed, to be a blessing. We praise you for it, and we, we bless you that you are able and willing to do it. In Yeshua's name, we pray, amen and amen. Well, I bless you guys on Facebook. I bless you guys on Instagram. I bless you guys on YouTube. Um, And I, I'm going to see you on November 15th at 5.30 p.m. for our next group strategy session.